Have you ever wondered what makes luck so lucky? What makes hair so hairy? What makes death so... Deathy? <laughs> <laughs> well, the answers are all right here. They... They were here a second ago. Um... Has anybody seen my posties? Anybody? Anybody? Um... I can't, I can't find them over... Oh, have you... Bob, Bob, you with the eyes. Why do parrots say hello? hello? You ask everyone you know, but they don't have the answer, so you ask... How Man does that brand of gold, it's penicillin, really mold. Can you use that to cure a cold? You ask... How How do they make rabbits feet? Well, really, that seems pretty neat. Do they make their size and cleats? You ask... How Welcome to How Come. I'm Professor Hugh Holcomb, and this is my lovely assistant. I'm your co-host. Yes, co-host, Mia, Mia Kalpa. Now, on each episode of How Come, we'll tackle a particular subject of interest, like statues, plumbing, and hygiene. <laughs> yes, Mia, there is much in our future. But today, we will focus on the subject of luck. Right, Hugh. Throughout human history, luck has played a large role in influencing the minute details of our daily lives. From black cats to four-leaf clovers, luck, both good and bad, is woven into the very fabric of our culture. Speaking of fabric, is that a velour? Ah. But the reality is that luck, once thought to be a magical swirling vortex of magic and wizardry, is now known to be an equally magical swirling vortex of science. Wow, Hugh, I never would have put it quite like that. Of course you wouldn't have. It uses many syllables. So, Hugh, why don't we leave your swirling vortex on the table for now and just move on to some historical facts? Good idea, Mia. Why don't we take a look at some of history's most famous good luck charms? In our studio today, to help us with this, we have our dear friend, Dr. Brooks, who has been sent to us by our esteemed sponsor, the Glockenspiel Institute, to be our personal on-set fact checker. If at any point we miss the mark with our information, a bubble will pop up on screen immediately to let you know. Thank you, Glockenspiel Institute, and thank you, Dr. Brooks. Happy to be a service, Mia. And now, lucky charms like you've never seen them before. <laughs> you can say that again. And now, lucky charms, like just you've never seen Just do the slides, them. Hugh. Just do the slides. Uh, okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, hey, look, uh, a lucky Australian horseshoe. Did you know if you throw this, it will come right back to you? And it will be lucky. Hugh, I don't Watch. really think that's such a... Hold. Hold. Watch out for the swirling vortex of science. And back. It's not, it's here. Just, it's still going. Just here, do the slides. <sighs> In ancient Egypt, the scarab, often made into omelets, was believed to hold the power to rule one's fate. The neighboring Arab nations were frightened by their miniature talons. And to avoid the threat of war, the pharaohs, for many generations, used the tiny insects to scare Arabs. Thus their name, scarabs. Napoleon Bonaparte, as most historians know, was able to access the power of his lucky third nipple through the front of his shirt, as seen in most of his portraits, as this was especially crucial at the height of battle. Returning from a Mediterranean island vacation with excessive chafing in this area led to his downfall at Waterloo. Where he died in embarrassment, like I'm about to do. As a side note, Napoleon is French for nipple. Not true. Yes, say and that in again. English, uh, nipple. And in English, his full name translates to. Nip I'm not going to say that. Nipple. I'm come and say it with me. Nipple Bonaparte. It's just that uh, you use, use, use your tongue, like in the back of the throat. Nipple. L -l -l -l. Nipple Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte. See? I need craft services. I the number seven was invented in 9th century Russia by its namesake a particularly superstitious comrade named Sven, who believed that six and a half was his lucky number, but couldn't ever remember how to do fractions. <laughs> Silly communists, fractions are when you rub two things together, 
Right, Mia? Let's just set up the score here. Hold the clicky. Clicky back. Thank you. Rainbows have been considered lucky since the 16th century in Ireland, when gold was at its highest value ever. And not being aware of the labor intensive mining, panning, and laundering operations the rest of the world used to acquire it, the Irish found a way to attain it directly from leprechauns, who delivered it in large pots at the end of a rainbow. Lucky for them. The primary difficulty with this method was determining which side of the rainbow is the start and which one is the front. Well, you're lucky if you find it at all. More on this phenomenon later in the program. Wow, Hugh, that was really a plethora of information. Oh, that's what hey, they call speaking it. of plethoras, I recently paid a visit to Bunnyfoot Farms. Ha, I too have been there, Mia. It was magnificent. Delicious carrots. Uh, why don't Did we just I go to a word from one carrots? of our sponsors? I think his name was Beta Cat. And now a word from one of our sponsors. He had small hands. He had Please. Small hands, and he, what he would do is he would roll the carrots up.